you got to understand when you come from nothing, there's not many people in your life speaking positivity, giving you a roadmap, putting structure in place to eliminate failure. No one's doing that for you. That's what the military really taught me. It wasn't about money. It was about people. If you learn to take care of the people, the people will take care of the money. In 2006, I went to Iraq and I was only going to do my tour in Iraq and I was coming back and I was getting out of the military. Well, I came back from Iraq. A month and a half later, I was out of the military. So you go from being in charge to having a team, to having fire teams, to squads, to platoon. You have all these people depending on you as a leader. And when you get out, there's no one you have to depend on except for yourself. And I got out of the Marine Corps in 2007, moved back to Louisiana where I'm from. And for the first couple of years, I really struggled because I, I didn't really have people to guide and motivate and inspire, help them get out of their troubles and their, their wrongdoings. And I think that that's probably the key thing that I've discovered is we have to help servicemen and women with a new purpose when they get out of the military. Welcome to the show, Michael. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. And first off, thank you for your service. You're welcome. I don't think there's enough recognition to all the men and women who actually take the that step and actually devote their lives to serving and providing the freedoms that we all have the privilege of taking for granted. So thank you. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people don't know why they join. And I can you know, just quickly tell you my quick story Please. why I joined the military. So my brother signed up in the delay entry program. Basically, a year before he's going to boot camp, he signed up for the delay entry program. and Which is what? Which is basically, you committed to join the military, but you have to wait a year because you have to prepare, you got to get ready, you got to do all these pulley functions. And two weeks before his recruiter sent my brother to boot camp, he's like, hey, Michael, I'll give you a $1,000 sign-up bonus to join the military with your brother. I was like, $1,000? Never seen a thousand dollars in my life. I'm I'm a country boy from Louisiana, had nothing growing up. So, the recruiter gave me a thousand dollars sign up bonus, and then uh, two weeks later, I went to boot camp. And how old were you? Eighteen years old. Fresh out of high school. Fresh out of high school, about six months out, uh, and uh, I went to boot camp. Three days in the boot camp, my brother slipped a disc in his back, got kicked out of the military, and thirty years later, here I am. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you went for a thousand dollars. I went for a thousand dollars. You had no. I had no plan. I had I had no idea what I was getting myself into. That's what I'm saying. Like people join for different reasons. I was interested in the military because I had no clue what I wanted to do. You got to understand when you come from nothing, there's not many people in your life speaking positivity, giving you a roadmap, putting structure in place to eliminate failure. No one's doing that for you. And my structure was join the military and the structure that they put around you helps you eliminate your own personal professional failure. And so the military is exactly what I needed. It was exactly what I needed at that moment in my time. Uh, I ended up spending 12 years in the Marine Corps. I got to a point where I no longer needed that structure because I had the discipline and the motivation to get out and be extremely successful. Would you say, dis I mean, I think we all think of what are the benefits of militaries? Discipline, structure, motivation, obviously getting into great shape, getting the opportunity to potentially see the world. Outside of the things we all probably assume are the benefits. What are these other, would you say, are the biggest pros that people don't realize the military provides? To me, like, so I, I did 12 years in the Marine Corps. I've been in the civilian community now for 14 plus years. So I've been out longer than I was in. What the military teaches you, it's not about money. It's not about profit. It's not about any of those things that are important to the civilian community. It's about learning, learning structure, learning discipline, how to take care of your team, how to make sure you leave no person behind. So like when I first got out of the military, I got in the convenience store industry. I knew nothing about the civilian community. I knew nothing about the business itself, but I knew people and I knew how to take care of people. I knew how to inspire people. And so I got involved with the convenience store industry, started with six convenience stores, grew to 10 in two years. Uh, but the first thing I did is went and spent time with people. I, like you know, part of, part of your relationship, you know, putting money in the bank when it comes to people. That's what the military really taught me. It wasn't about money. It was about people. 
if you learn to take care of the people, the people will take care of the money. Mm -hmm. And so through that, those are hidden hidden gems that you learn through the structure and discipline. You got to follow this methodical process. And, you know, some people come out of that methodical process and never can turn it off. I feel like I got out at the at, at a time where I was disciplined enough, but not so far gone where, you know, oh, he's a military guy, he's psycho and crazy, <laughs> you know, like because a lot of military people don't know how to turn it off, you know. And I, I, I was telling you guys before the show that, you know, a lot of people spend 10, 20, 30 years making a great name for themselves in the military. And then they spend the next 40, 50 talking about who they used to be. I'm 48 years old and I feel like I'm only just now getting started at 48. I have 12 years uh, Marine Corps experience. I have 10 years at the Department of Veterans Affairs. So I retired after 22 years of federal service, but God just really en enlightened me that most successful people that we hear about don't really start until the after 45 and beyond. Look at look at the historical facts. Like look at the KFC guy, right? He didn't he failed and failed and failed, and finally in his 70s he finally figured out something sure. that worked, right? And so, like, you only need to be right once. You only got to be right once. Right. And so, like, God's just given me this heart and passion to help servicemen and women. And that's led me to many different roads and many different roadmaps and opportunities. But at the end of the day, as long as I stay true to my true north, my moral compass, God's called me to help and inspire servicemen and women, convert their military experience into the civilian community. And before we get into that, because I think what you're working on and what you've developed is not only groundbreaking, but I think it's so impactful and powerful for all men and women of service as well as businesses and how you're bridging that. But why do you think so many ex-military individuals struggle outside of turning it off? Because I know a lot of former military men and women that do sometimes struggle to take advantage of civilian life because the rest of us don't have that structure. We weren't trained how yeah. you were trained. What are those reasons? Like, What have you seen that maybe... I don't want to say the military is on a bad job because I don't know if it is their job to train you to get back to civilian life. But what do you think can be done or what would you advise those service members, men and women who are listening to this, those former military? What should they start to do so they can make a better transition? So the number one thing I, I, I can relate it to is my story. So I served from 1995 to 2007. In 2006, I went to Iraq. And I was only going to do my tour in Iraq and I was coming back and I was getting out of the military. Well, I came back from Iraq, a month and a half later, I was out of the military. So you go from being in charge to having a team, to having fire teams, to squads, to a platoon. You have all these people depending on you as a leader. And when you get out, there's no one you have to depend on except for yourself. And I think that is the, to me, that's the root of the transition period, having no new purpose no no one to care for and so like as a dad for example you know as a dad you're exhausted you're sick but you know your kids got to go to school you got to drop them off you have a purpose and when you have a purpose it's easy to get up and fulfill that responsibility and when you don't have that when you get out of the military you go from taking care of all these people they get in trouble on the weekend you get in trouble right so it's like it's a yin and yang kind of kind of relationship and I got out of the Marine Corps in 2007, moved back to Louisiana where I'm from. And for the first couple of years, I really struggled because I, I didn't really have people to guide and motivate and inspire and help them get out of their troubles and their, their wrongdoings. And I think that that's probably the key thing that I've discovered is we have to help servicemen and women with a new purpose when they get out of the military. What was your reason for exiting the military when you did? I was at 12, 12 years, one month, 13 days, nobody's counting. Uh, <laughs> and the only reason I know that is because when you get discharged, they put it on your paper that you did 12 years, one month, 13 days. So I have to say that. Um, um, I got out because I went through a divorce. Um, and I, my wife and I were married for a couple of years. I had two little kids with her. And I'm the type of person where I'm very... It's, it's all, I'm all in or I'm all out. That, like I am, my, my wife calls in the extreme, but that's a gift and it could be a curse at the same time. Uh, I, think the, gifts that way. I think the gifts are that, okay, if I stay on this roadmap, I will give myself more to the Marine Corps than I would my wife and I'll end up divorced again. 
And I love my wife and my kids to the point where I don't want to do this again. I don't want to go through those hardships again. I don't want to fail again at this. So I gave up something that I was amazing at to make sure that fast forward, here we are. My wife and I have been together now for 23 years. My youngest son's 18. My, my son's 18. My daughter's 20. And my older son from my first marriage, he is 25. And I'm a grandpa. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, but I got out because, number one, is I had peace that surpassed all understanding. You know, a lot of people get out and don't have peace about getting out. I had peace about getting out. And I knew that marriage and putting God first and the family and taking care of that responsibility was a greater calling than serving for the next 20, 30 years. Mm-hmm. So how did you come up with this VIP program? True story. I'm in Louisiana. I own convenience stores. I had six convenience stores, grew to 10 in two years. Um, one of my best friends growing up, his name's Nicholas Gamble, and uh, he followed me in the Marine Corps. I was a Marine Corps drill instructor when he joined the Marines, so he, he, he joined a little late. And he got in a car accident when he was in the Marines and had some head injuries and got addicted to pain pills, got discharged from the military, moved back to Louisiana ways from and uh, got addicted to pain, pain pills and got addicted to drugs. And uh, in the middle of all my great success in Louisiana, my first year in business, my, my partners and I, we, we generated $49.5 million in gross revenue. Uh, a lot of great things were happening. But in the middle of all the success, my best friend committed suicide. He, hung, he hung himself. And I noticed that in the middle of that turmoil, that I can spend the next 20, 30 years making tens of millions of dollars, or I can take my skill set, what I've learned, and go and help other people. And so after two years of being in Louisiana, God gave me peace again about, I got out of the Marine Corps, God gave me peace, I was in Louisiana, and I had 10 convenience stores, we were crushing it. Uh, I had two more under construction, I had five more pending. I created my own 24 seven express brand. I worked with the key leaders of Chevron and Shell that designed their brand and I created a whole brand called 24 seven express. I was going to take this across the United States. So if you give me something, I'm going to take it to the next level. And, uh, but God spoke to me in the middle of all that turmoil and said, Hey, you can spend the next 20 years doing this and making millions of dollars. I was in private jets and you name it, I was doing it. But God really called me to go help servicemen and women in that transition because there was moments where I want to quit and give up. And so I left Louisiana and I came back to California and I started a veterans impact program and I started it through the power of fitness. Um, what was the idea? When you came the idea back? was, okay, servicemen and women are, are struggling to transition out. I had enough momentum and discipline as a 12 year Marine former drill instructor to get out and be self-disciplined and make my way through this. Well, a lot of people don't have the training I have to be successful. So God told me, he's like, you have to go help these servicemen and women because the majority of them are getting out and they're falling on their sword. So most people don't know this, over almost 200,000 service members leave the military every year. And of the 200,000, only about 15% are, are tapping into a program called SkillBridge And so for the last, you know, 14 years, I've helped thousands of service members get out of the military, find a new career path. And I just feel like I'm I'm the bridge between them going down the wrong path or going down the right path. And I think that we all need some kind of motivator and spot. It's people to step in our path to say, hey, you're going the wrong way. And I always look at it like this, you know, men, for whatever reason, there's not enough men in our lives speaking mentorship into our lives you know there's not a lot of grandpas that are saying hey young young whippersnapper you're not doing that right you need to do this like i yeah i don't really have anybody speaking in my life and so i see it as an opportunity to intervene at a critical point in someone's life and based upon our leadership ability can we intervene figure out how they need help and we steer them in the right direction because if you can help them smoothly transition into a, a pathway in something that they're passionate about, they will go out and crush it a hundred times over. That's why when you look at franchising, fitness, fitness, uh, you know, food industry, the majority of servicemen and women that get out, 15% are owned 
by military people. And they get that because they can take a playbook and go mm-hmm. execute. And that's really powerful. So how do you help them? Like, how do you connect with the 200,000 that are leaving the military every year? And how do you expose them and yeah. inform them and take them through this journey? Because I do think there's not enough old heads mentoring, yeah. but I also think a lot of young men, especially, but women sometimes also don't always seek help. Yeah. And when they hear it, they don't always want to take it. So I think you have a little bit of <clears throat> yeah. that double edged sword. Like, how do you kind of impact that group and say, okay, here's the 200,000. I'm going to A, get to them. I'm going to B, get them to listen. And then I'm going to help them understand the value of pivoting here and yeah. going down that path. So the de- Department of Defense has a program called SkillBridge, right? Uh, SkillBridge is basically- Which has been around for a while. Which has been around since like 2016, I, b- I believe. And the whole purpose of the SkillBridge program is a servicemen and women's last six months of their military career. Companies can apply to become a SkillBridge program. It doesn't matter if it's construction, fitness, engineering, aerospace, whatever. Civilian companies can apply with the Department of Defense to say, hey, we want to help servicemen and women that have a passion for fitness. For example, I work full time for F-45 training. Um, And so what we did as a company is we went to the Department of Defense. We applied for the SkillBridge program. You have to create a 12 to 26 week long uh, comprehensive training program with rubrics and everything, benchmarks to help the servicemen and women. Once you get approved, a serviceman and women men or women, if you go to the Department of Defense website and you search any key title that you're interested in, construction type of the work, all the companies that have a skill bridge program on the construction show up, type in fitness, all the companies that have a fitness program. Long story short, companies can go to the Department of Defense, get approved, and then servicemen and women that have an interest in your industry, like Everbowl, uh, the fast food you know uh, industry could apply, get approved, and once you get approved in servicemen and women, the government pays them while we train them, educate them, mentor them, and prepare them to be considered for employment at the end of their skill bridge program. And it's the last six months of their... Up to the last six months. So they can be up in your program for three to six months. It depends on what their military command will approve. So right now at F-45 training, I have 153 active duty service members that are in, in, in our programs all throughout the United States. So basically, they're active duty. They get orders to F-45 training, and we place them at studios all throughout the United States. If they want to go to Baton Rouge, we work with the Baton Rouge location, and we just place them there, and they're interns until they get out of the military. At the end of their internship, the studio has the first right of refusal to hire them, or we release them to the F-45 network, and then they get hired at another studio. I have another 165 pre-approved to join our program. So we're dealing with 350 to 500 service members at a time, right? F45 is a global fitness company. There's a lot of locations. We've sold 3,600 studios in 74 countries around the world. It doesn't matter if they want to be a head coach, a head trainer, master trainer, or an owner. We provide that pathway for them, structure, so they don't fail, right? They have the interests, so we apply and we put our name out there and say, hey, we if you're a serviceman or woman, you're interested in this industry, we have an opportunity for you. And then they come to us and they apply for our program and we say, hey, here's what the program stipulations are. And we're just feeding the F45 network. We're, sub- we're, we're providing that pathway so they can get out and make sure they don't fall on their sword. But, okay. And that's the skill bridge side. That's the skill bridge. Side. So how does the veteran impact program tie in? Well, I called it the Veterans Impact Program because they're servicemen and women who are going to become veterans, and the Veterans Impact Program is just what I call um, our skill bridge program that helps For service members F- to become veterans. At F-45. At F-45. So theoretically, you could take that same model yep. and help promote it for- Any other company. Any other company out there. Yeah. It could be Everbowl's Veterans Impact Program. Sure. It could be, you know, Shaq's Hot Chicken or whatever. Big Chicken. Big Chicken, yeah. <laughs> Shaq's Big Chicken. You know, it doesn't matter if if a company out there has a heart to s- support servicemen and women. You know, a lot of people don't know what to do. Like everyone says, oh, thank you for your service. Yeah, but you're a company. You have money. You have, you know, like we need write offs as companies because, sure. you know, we have to, you know, not showcase so much overhead. Why not give our servicemen and women a hand up, not a handout? At the end of the day, they got to put in the work. They got to intern. They got to show up. They got to do the work. And if they don't do the work, then we can release them back to their military command. And hey, thank you for the opportunity. But, you know, like I've been doing it now for almost five years with F-45 and out of my five years of 
over a thousand service members we've helped, I've only had to like send five of them back to their military command because they weren't showing up. They didn't want to do it anymore. Okay, you don't want to do it. Call your military command, send them back to the base. No I mean, harm, no There's fun. always going to be some. Of course. Right? Yep. How would you improve the skill bridge program? What do you feel like as a company, because you're on both sides, you're on the F-45 side, you're on the skill bridge side as a former, as a veteran yourself, former uh, service member. What do you feel that the company needs to understand when they join that they can do better to support the program? Because it can't all be up to the Department of Defense. Yeah, of course. So you have to, it's a double-sided coin, right? You have the Department of Defense that said, hey, any company that wants to help um, apply and get approved. Then on the flip side of that, I believe that companies have to stand up a military division internally to that people on your team that understand the military, talk military, have been there, done that, got the T-shirts, that can help be that advocate to help those transitioning into your company. For example, you know, when I joined at 45, there was no military division. I stood up the military division. I wrote the SOPs. I wrote the manuals. I created the skill bridge program with my team. Long story short, without someone like me that had insight knowledge, it would have taken us a lot longer to get to where we're at today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we save, you know, the franchise network millions of dollars in labor cost savings per year. Because, you know, like when you look at a profit, you know, P&L and you're looking at your benchmarks per month, how many bowls do I got to sell for every bowl? You're looking at like, where, what is my break even analysis? Well, when you add more leadership in there, and let's just say you get a service member for three months that you don't have to pay, that you can add to staff, that can build customer relationships, make sure that the bathrooms are clean, whatever the case may be, you're adding value to every customer that walks to that door. So, you know, traditionally, if you only have one or two people on staff, now you have a third person there, you can go build community relationships. And that's the key to anything is we're giving a service member an opportunity, but you're giving your business an opportunity at the yeah. same time. Is there a limited amount of hours or is there a maximum or minimum number of hours you can employ these interns? Yeah, so the service members can't work more than 40 hours a week. That's it. Okay. So you can work them on nights, weekends, holidays, whatever the case may be, uh, whatever your business model is. Like when, if I was in the convenience store industry still, we were open 24 hours a day. We had convenience stores, we had a restaurant, and we had uh, casinos in there as well. We would put them in night shift, day shift, whatever the case may be. But, you know, like if your business operations is 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., you can put them on whatever schedule as long as they don't work over 40 hours. And do you, as the business owner, interview them and, and pick them or is it the Department of Defense just sends so, them and they show up? So the way that we did it at 45 is HQ headquarters created the program and we stood up the military division. That means we have somebody at headquarters that's overseeing this program, making sure it's successful. That's number one. Number two is when an intern applies, we make sure that they're fully vetted and they're a good fit for our organization. And once we feel like they're a good fit, we connect with the location in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Say, hey, I got this service member that's interested in joining your studio for the next three to six months as an intern. Here's this, here's a one-page informational sheet about him. Uh, would you be interested in hosting them? So they, and, just, they still go through the interview so process. So we, we still go through the interview process, but HQ kind, uh, we, we quarterback yeah. the process. But the Department of Defense doesn't just – Nope. Sh they don't just show up one day. No. Nope. No. Nope. So you still, you're still getting that same yep. traditional hiring experience. Yep. We're just doing it – we're basically recruiting servicemen and women transitioning out of the military, and we're taking them through a methodical process to make sure they're a good fit for – it's a good fit for them, and it's a good fit for the organizations that have a skill bridge program. And then for those who are listening who have already left the military, they can't take part in the Skills Bridge program, I'm assuming, because it's only they, for active. Well, when you sign up for, when your company signs up for a Skill Bridge program, you have the option to only take on active duty service members, or you could take on veterans, and or you could take on military spouses. And the Department of Events will cover? No. So they will only cover the active duty service member salary. Okay. If you have a veteran coming through that process... Like, for example, at F-45, we have some veterans that apply for the Skill Bridge program. And when we find out they're veterans, we're like, hey, we'll set you up on a fast track. But, you know, instead of being with our program for three months, we're going to do a, a, a compressed model where you'll intern for 30 days. At the end of that 30 days, then 
we'll make sure if you're a good fit, we'll hire you. So they'll intern for 30 days in yep. this example. Yep. So there is a program for those who are here in this and, and, it, and it's at the discretion of the company, right? Sure. So like as Everbo's program stands up, you know, immediate action is let's take care of active duty service members first. And you're gonna have onesies and twosies come through and that's why you have your subject matter expert at the company to deal with those situations so you can find a roadmap and find a pathway. Because at the end of the day, I don't I don't wanna leave any serviceman or woman behind, regardless if they're a veteran or active duty or a military spouse, they need help too. And as long as we're doing the right things for the right reasons, we find a we, we find a good battle rhythm. You know, like sometimes you'll get service members and they're super smart, super witty, and you know it's, it won't take them three months to be trained and operationally sound. I've I've had people within two weeks, man, they're rock stars. They're going to become owners. Mm -hmm. And fast forward, here we are. You know we've helped about thirty service members become you know franchise owners through the Skill Bridge program. That's wonderful. And what I'm hearing as a business owner is it's kind of a double benefit because, like you said, not only do I get to help our service men and women transition and, and do something to help them who have, you know, and thank them for their service, but it also does help our business because we're putting discipline, work ethic oriented, great men and young men and women into a program. And it is covered for a period of time by the Department of Defense. Yep. So it can help our p &L. Yes, 100%. And expose us to talent that we might not have been able to, to your point, add an extra human during a busy time of the day yep. without having to incur those extra costs. Like for example, if you have a, if you have a location, if we have an F-45 studio that's struggling, we'll talk to the performance manager and say, hey, we got this guy going to Virginia area. He's open to, do you have any studios that are struggling in that area that need more manpower mm -hmm. but don't have the, the revenue to support that? Then we'll put interns there. We can get two or three interns there at the, at the location that's struggling to help get it turned around. Sure. So it's, to me, it's a it's a no brainer. How many businesses in America would you say are part of Skillbridge? I think uh, about five thousand companies. Okay. About so it's been around for you know yeah. uh, coming up on a decade or so. Uh, so there's about five thousand companies that are part of the Skillbridge program, but not everybody knows how to run a an efficient program, and that's why it's really important that you have a subject matter expert on your team internally to make sure that this program doesn't fail. Because if you really think about it from a civilian community perspective, that's the golden ticket to work with any serviceman or woman, regardless of what branch of service or what military installation that they're at. It's free branding and free marketing mm -hmm. for you. It's a it's an R and D part of your P and L. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if it takes off, great. If it doesn't, you can always shut it down. But it's an R and D, and you can write off some of those you know overhead expenses that you don't want to show at the end of the year. Have you considered kind of bundling up what you built, those SOPs that you built for F-45 and creating almost an evergreen VIP program for the other 4,999 so they can do a better job onboarding? Because not all of us yeah. have someone like yourself at HQ. So, so yes. Um, so my wife has been in the banking industry for 25 plus years. And she her last job, she was an, a financial analyst uh, for Union Bank who got bought out by U.S. Bank. And once she helped with the merger and acquisition, they got rid of all the people that were part of the union bank. Well, she was one of those where they eliminated her position. And so she found herself like, what am I going to do? I was like, babe, why don't you just do what I did for F45, but start doing it for other companies? And for the last year, she's helped Everbowl mm -hmm. create their EVIP program which is now ready to be launched. And so you guys can help service. So I've taken everything I've learned and I've passed it on to my wife so she can go help other companies do this. But I, I, I think that we're only limited by, I, th I think that we're limited without bringing in software and technology to support. So imagine this, imagine there's tens of thousands of companies out there that want to support servicemen and women, they just don't know how to do it. What if we can create a technology system where the Department of Defense uses it, but the civilian community uses it as well? They come, the way I see it is they come in, they take a test. Hey, I'm getting out of the military, I gotta take this test. This test tells me I'm gonna be good in these three industries. And then out of these three industries, you have 15 companies that are skill bridge approved, and so like, a system that talks to mm -hmm. a three, it talks to the service member, it talks to the Department of Defense, and it talks to the company at the company level. 
I believe that if we can create a pathway for that, leveraging people that specialize in the technology and IA, IA, AI realm, uh, I think that we can help more service members, we can help more companies, and we can have a greater impact than we, right? I'm, I'm only able to help so many service members by myself. Sure. We help about 500 service members at F45 per year, um, give or take. Imagine if we could take that to scale on how we can, instead of having a recruitment firm to go find that special person that's a civilian, we it's a recruitment firm that does nothing but specializes for the military community. No, I agree. And I think what your wife's helping us with here at Everbull has been amazing. And for the, if I was listening to our show right now, I'd be like, well, how can Everbull participate? And then my biggest concern would be, well, I don't have a Michael who can run the program. And so the fact that your wife is kind of yeah, bottling she, that yep. up, there's an opportunity, I think, for others to maybe reach out to her when she's done with Everbull yeah. uh, <laughs> to leverage yeah. your expertise and hers and help them take part in the yeah. Skillbridge program, not only be able to help service men and women, but help your business yeah. and increase your P&L, your profitability, and R&D this and see how we can bridge those gaps. I think the technology you talked about would be amazing. Yeah, I don't know if it's being worked on. If you're working on it, someone should be working on it. Getting all the departments to talk to themselves is always a fiasco and challenge. Of course. You know, like, I've been dealing right. with the federal government for 29 and a half years, right? I joined the Marines in 95, so I've been around the federal government for a long time. What is their motto? Hurry up and wait? Yeah, yeah. Hurry up and wait. So, yeah. you know, like, I think that uh, taking, you know, what's mandatory with the military, the Department of Defense, each branch of service, tying that into a system where we can control the controllables, right? For example, when we get interns at through SkillBridge, they come to us, we mold them, we mentor them. But what if the service member is not happy the way that the company's treating them? There's no way for the service member to report that to the Department of Defense that mm-hmm. they're not doing a good job. Like, honestly, in order to take this to scale, uh, we need to get some of the smartest people in the room and we need to solve this. And the reason why the SkillBridge program was created is a lot of service members would get out of the military and spend the next 18 months on unemployment. Well, it's cheaper for the federal government to train them before they get out with a new career. We do a really great job on molding, mentoring, and getting people prepared into the military. And then we do a really bad job at helping them transition out of the military into a, you know, and a lot of people say, you know, you know, they need to just go out and figure it out. No, we need leaders to step up and say, you know, something they can't figure it out, we're gonna figure it out. I feel like I've cracked the code with how many people I've been able to help, but that's only for one company. You know what I mean? Like, how do we take this to scale? And like, how do we represent tens of thousands of companies through technology and have the Department of Defense buy into that and say, you know something, you're getting out of the military, you have to sign up for this platform, take a test, provide your role, like provide a roadmap and benchmark so they can get out and be successful. Because if we can do that, just like we help them get in the military and here's your roadmap. You got to go to this school, got to go to this training. We don't do that for the civilian community. And if we can solve that problem, we can solve one of the biggest issues in our country. I agree. Is there is there an opportunity for those listening to possibly reach out to you and your wife for help in these programs if they're interested for their business? Yeah, you can reach out to my wife um, at admin at Nichols.associates. Uh, she'll reach out and she works with companies as companies need support, have questions or guidance. She's a consultant now. You know, she's no longer in the banking industry for after 25 years. And she just sits back and helps helps companies figure it out. You know, she'll help you create a roadmap. You take all your job titles that you have. You take your key job titles. We create the 12 to 26 uh, week training curriculum and we help get that approved. And once it's approved, now you can start accepting service members to come into your your uh, company and help uh, reduce that P&L overhead. Well, and I think, I hope everyone really understands kind of what you just laid out, because there is a real opportunity, not only to do good by the men and women who have served this country, but to your point, bring in talented young adults or middle-aged adults based on however long they've been in service, who have been militarily trained, who do have that discipline and work ethic, bring them in and let the government, Department of Defense, cover the cost of them during that 12 to 26 week training, Yep. see if they're a good fit. And if they are a good fit, you can keep them long term. And if they're not, yeah. you got to the opportunity and you can keep working through it. So you can bring in those interns, air quote, yep. and bring them in and do a double win, help your business and help others. It's almost like you're test driving before you buy in. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. as a business owner, you know, like I'm an entrepreneur. So like business ownership, like I want to know what's in it for me. 
and then the Department of Defense wants to know what's in it for them. And so you kind of bring in all those together. You get a serviceman or woman for three to six months. If they're not performing at your expectations, you do not have to hire them. Mm -hmm. However, comma, your job is to mold, mentor, educate them, empower them, give them every tool to be successful. So at the end of that three to six months, they're providing they're they're provided a job opportunity if they perform at the expectations. Sure. And I feel like most business owners want to do that. Yeah. Who doesn't want to groom their talent? It's a no brainer. If you're a company out there that wants to help servicemen and women, the Skillbridge program is the way to go. I mean, I won't lie. You know, we learned about it from you and we're implementing it now. We're excited to try it over at Everbowl and, and take part in it. And that's why I'm so excited to have the opportunity to have you come on the show and share it with the rest because while we haven't yet gone as deep as F45, there's yeah. a real opportunity for us businesses around the country to, Absolutely. to do two things at once, help our business, especially at this time, and help transition these amazing men and women into a, a role that they can be successful yeah. at. And so I'm I'm so fortunate and thankful that you that you came on and, and shared it. Yeah. Right before uh, we jumped to rapid fire, because that's the yeah. always the fun part. You're probably going to be pretty good with your military experience. <laughs> Is there anything that we didn't mention about it that I that you think would be important for our audience to make sure that they understand? You know, obviously they can go to the Department of Defense website, they can Google it, they can apply, they can yeah. go through that process. Should they reach out to someone like your wife before they do that, or is it better to start that process and then reach out after? It depends on your organizational structure. Some people have a R&D department that can help take on some of this responsibility. Look, at the end of the day, you could do it on your own or you can hire a coach or a mentor to help you through that process. It may take you a lot longer to figure it out on your own. Can you figure it out? Absolutely. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, if you have a coach, you have a mentor, they help fast track that through the process. So the ROI, the return on investment, is a lot sooner than later, right? Some people can spend their wills for the next three years trying to figure out what, what the federal government's trying to say. Like, I have no idea. Sure. It, it, look, it, it, the government's <laughs> complex. And I think that if, if you need help and want, you want support, uh, my wife's available and she will help guide you through that process. I've just taken my five years of DOD experience and turned it over to her and she's kind of just running out and helping other companies um, help more service members. Well, as I said, I mean, thank you so much for everything you are doing. Absolutely. You ready for some rapid fire? Rapid fire. Here we All go. Right. You're going to stare in the camera one. I'm going to ask you three questions. 30-second-ish answers. First thing that comes to mind. You ready? Yeah? All right. What has been the most rewarding lesson that you've learned that has transferred over from military into business? Discipline. Not about profit. It's about people. If you can take care of the people, the people will take care of the money. Yes, we need money to survive. We live in a monetary society, but the most valuable asset we have is people. And if we can get people in the right positions, uh, we can we can build a skyscraper. How has fitness served you in your years in business? Honestly, I'm not the man who I am without the power of fitness. Um, I wake up every day and I have to work out. You know, like life can be heavy sometimes. And physical ther physical therapy, fitness, it's my mental, it's my mental disconnect from the world, and I can focus on me because, for example, uh, one one hour of working out, I'm focused on myself. The re other 23 hours, people are pulling on me. Emails are coming in, missions, you know, deadlines, benchmarks, all these different things. So fitness is the thing that helps me uh, keep my mental and physical clarity. And finally, in your experience, what is the best way for someone to make a shift in their life to be the best version of themselves? Leader, leadership. I like to say the word leader shift, the ability to pivot when you get punched in the mouth, things ain't working. At the end of the day, if you always do what you always done, you will always get what you always gotten. You have to change. You have to be fluid. You have to be willing to change. And if you're not going to be, be willing to change, you're going to be stuck in the same position week after week, month after month, and year after year. So you have to be willing to change. Well, you heard it here, Michael. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your experience, for your service to the country, for everything you've done, for what you are doing now, for all the men and women out there who are transitioning out of the military. I think it's an incredible program. We at Everbull are so excited to participate. We learned about it from you and your family, and uh, we owe you a debt of gratitude. And also what you just ended on, I mean, 
if you keep doing what you always did, you're going to keep getting what you always got. I mean, couldn't have said it any better. Got to change it up. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate this has been amazing. And we look forward to, to being a proud member of the Skillbridge program. Absolutely. God bless. Hoorah. Hey, everyone. First, I want to thank all of you for tuning in. And if you guys haven't heard about my new book, Relationship Bank Account, click the link in the show notes or search the title on Amazon. This book is packed with all my secrets to success in both relationships and life. Make sure to pick up a copy, and if the book helps you on your journey, let us know by leaving a review. I appreciate all of you and can't wait to see you on the next one.